some other things I have here that might be applicable for anybody getting started in HF. You definitely want to have the band plan. The band plan is available. I got this one out of um, an ARRL uh, magazine, um, QST. I just uh, kind of sliced it out of one of the pages. A lot of these are, uh, this one is from the uh, ARRL. A lot of times uh, various uh, manufacturers will make somewhat of a poster and um, have advertising on that as well. This is a more detailed breakdown. The basic same thing with a lot more information in particular in terms of frequencies, but once you get your general class license and you can operate in the uh, HF spectrum here, this is a really handy item um, to keep around with you to let you know what the particular operating frequencies and the particular modes are. And for instance, right now, I was tuned in on the 20 meter band um, on the phone portion of the band, in the upper sideband mode. So I can simply go to the blue area here, which I'm a general class operator, so I need to stay within the boundaries of the blue section of frequencies here, which start at 14.225 and extend up to 14.350 and I'm good to use phone in any of those areas. If I switch to CW um, then I would look at the red area here again I'm on the general line so that would be 14.025 to 14.150 and this is just a handy reference to keep around to make sure you're operating within the proper band for your privileges. Another handy item is a little logbook. I've got this little miniature logbook from the ARRL um, just to keep track of my contacts. And it's very handy, very portable. Works well on the desktop as well as when you're, when you're um, out operating portable. Obviously there's not a great deal of room to write in here, so you've got to keep your writing uh, um, on the minimum, but it gets you by. Another handy item is the operating manual for the radio. Um, these manuals are pretty well written. It's a good idea that when you get your radio, you sit down, you go through this manual somewhat in detail, but it would bore the average person to tears just to try and read it like a book. It's much better to get a setup going on the air um, and actually have the radio operating, go through, press the buttons, um, and it tells you exactly what key presses to make and, and what to expect from the radio. Obviously a radio like the 817, it's a compromise. There may seem like there are a lot of buttons on this radio, but when you get down to all of the various adjustments that you may need to make, you're going to be getting into sub-menus um, within the radio and having some general concept of how those menus are laid out is extremely important and you can see this is just an example of one of the uh, detailed um, areas within the radio within the various menus and this just focuses on the uh, function keys A, B, and C, which actually are soft function keys. They change function depending on um, what menu item you're, you're utilizing from the radio. Along those lines, it's a very good idea to pick up a manual such as this. This is made by the Nifty Ham Accessories Company. This one is for my ICOM 7000, but the same idea would apply. I haven't gotten one yet for the 817. Um, just a very handy little spiral bound, very durable manual. These are printed on um, waterproof uh, coated type of uh, thick cardstock paper. So you could actually take this out in the field. You wouldn't have to worry about the edges getting crinkled or getting it wet or anything like that. So very handy item. The ICOM 7000 is a little bit uh, more complex radio in terms of its operating features, so this might not be quite as long for the uh, 817, but 
very handy item to have and the nifty company also makes uh, a band plan that you that is along these same lines that's uh, waterproof and everything for field use I've got those and, and find that they're very helpful just going to demonstrate a simple easy way to bring a coax in through an open window but still maintain a sort of weather seal and what I've done here is not glamorous by any means, but I basically got some pipe insulation. Um, I've got that laid down in the um, track of the window. Obviously this is open um, probably about uh, three quarters of an inch or so. My coax is coming in. It's important that you not um, disrupt the uh, braid or shield that's around the outside of the inner conductor of the coax uh, that changes the impedance of the coax and can um, absolutely destroy uh, signal carry carrying um, abilities of the coax. So you want to make sure that that is relatively protected. So I do not have that crimped in any way. As you can see it's kind of moving back um, and forth very freely but I've just got a link to this type of pipe insulation in there in order to uh, block um, the wind from coming through. And likewise up here I've just got some of this foam kind of stuck wedged down in to the um, window between the panes to uh, block air intrusion from coming in. There certainly would be more glamorous and possibly more effective ways to do this, but just for a short-term operation, this works out really, really well.